गुड आफ्टरनून सर गुड आफ्टरनून सर गुड आफ्टरनून साहब जॉइन करवाना चाहिए हेलो 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 यस सर सर मैं फोन करेगा नहीं हुआ था यस सर यस श्वेता ने क्या नहीं सर वो इसमें कुछ फोन करेगा ना दैन वी कैन स्टार्ट यस सर अरे अपूर्वा हाँ सर वो गाड़ी मार्च होता है हाँ इतना वो गाड़ी मार्च हुए थे तो हमें चालू रखो हाँ हाँ सर हाँ यस सर कब सुबह सर सर मैं सायब ज्वाइन करूँ सर यस सर गुड आफ्टरनून सर
good afternoon sir uh, i i am dr kostav shah i will be presenting seminar on intestinal stoma under guidance of dr uh, pankaj modi sir uh, apurv sir molik sir vinit sir hardik sir and prujal sir uh, first of all definition of stoma stoma is defined as surgically created opening in the abdominal wall through underlying viscus to allow a passage of urine stool or mucus secretion types of intestinal stoma based on the viscus uh, which we are taking to communicate with the abdominal wall include uh, if we are taking colon it is colostomy if we are taking ileal loop it is ileostomy uh, these both are usually for diversion or defunctioning purposes and for feeding purposes we do jejunostomy gastrostomy and esophagus stomy is for mucosal secretion uh, post esophageal resection if uh, we have to do mucus uh, drainage or saliva drainage or to avoid uh, to avoid any uh, chances of uh, aspiration pneumonitis okay moving on uh, ileostomy ileostomy is a surgical procedure where an opening is created in between ileum a uh, preferably distal ileum and the abdominal wall uh, ileostomy has no sphincter control ileostomy is designed either to be temporary or permanent there are that is why there are two types permanent ileostomy or temporary ileostomy temporary ileostomy is further divided into end ileostomy in cases in which there is extensive sub, uh, total colo, uh, there is extensive colonic resection in which we it is difficult to bring out uh, a loop of ileum or do uh, exteriorization of uh, both the ends of the resection uh, indications for temporary end ileostomy following emergent subtotal colectomy with hartmann's procedure uh, in this the distal end of the uh, colon which is after resection is uh, closed and buried in the uh, abdominal cavity while the distal most part of the ileum is brought out through the abdominal wall 20 to 30 cm proximal to ileocecal junction uh, indications for uh, in which emergent uh, subtotal colectomy is done include inflammatory bowel disease pseudomembranous colitis ischemic colitis and lower uh, gastrointestinal bleed in cases of uh, familial adenomatous polyposis or severe trauma to the uh, colon during blunt injury or crush injury uh, in inflammatory bowel disease and in, in pseudomembranous colitis also there are chances of uh, acute or gastrointestinal bleed temporary and ileostomy with mucous fistula is a second option in which after resection of a gangrenous segment of bowel and distal part of the colon is viable uh, so we can bring the colon uh, out as shown in the figure on left side with red arrow mark there is a mucus fistula uh, which drains only mucus and the one with black arrow is a distal end ileostomy it is done in cases where there is a extensive gangrenous segment of bowel which has to be resected or there is a perforated cecal lesion in which primary anastomosis is contraindicated mucus fistula can also be yeah continue continue for sure yes. mucus fistula uh, can also be uh, brought out through the same opening in which cases uh, a all mucolytic procedure or a divine procedure can be done to form double barrel ileostomy but it is a type of end ileostomy with mucus fistula only so when you cannot bring those two together you can do something like this yes sir for permanent end ileostomy following total proctocolectomy as in cases of ulcerative colitis or familial adenomatous polyposis when ileal pouch and anal anastomosis is contraindicated there is extensive rectal involvement or severe anorectal disease is also present in ulcerative colitis and ileal pouch cannot be formed in that cases we have to go for a permanent end ileostomy in crohn's colitis with severe anorectal involvement in severe fecal incontinence it is not indicated to do 
I just told me it was previously done when, uh, but uh, currently uh, norm is to do loop colostomy. Hmm. Uh, but oh, in fecal incontinence, we don't do a ileostomy. Why should we be doing an ileostomy in incontinence? Yes, sir. Uh, it was previously when uh, end colostomy was not done. There was an okay. incompetent ileocecal wall. They used to do fecal incontinence, but nowadays it is abolished to do uh, yes. end ileostomy in these cases. In severe congenital involvement, uh, congenital abnormalities as in uh, involvement by Hirschsprung disease for the entire colon, then uh, we have to go for permanent end ileostomy by doing subtotal colectomy or uh, pro pro colectomy. In temporary loop ileostomy, we do it for protection of distal anastomosis, as in case of ileal pouch anal anastomosis or uh, ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease. Uh, when there we when we have to do iliorectal anastomosis in case of uh, subtotal colectomy, uh, low colorectal or coloanal uh, following low anterior resection for adenocarcinoma of rectum, uh, colorectal obstruction with incompetent ileocecal wall. We can do temporary loop ileostomy. We can also do in these cases uh, loop transverse colostomy. Um, I will discuss later why loop colostomy. Uh, what are the advantages of loop doing loop colostomy and what are the advantages of doing uh, ileostomy in this okay. case? Okay. It is prophylactic. It causes prophylactic diversion for near obstructing rectal carcinoma, receiving preoperative new adjuvant chemo radiotherapy. Patient is, uh, we are planning to do surgery after uh, local is controlled by new adjuvant chemo radiation. Then, uh, if the patient is having rectal carcinoma which is obstructing, then we just do ileostomy as first procedure, go for chemo radiotherapy, and then after new adjuvant chemo radiotherapy, we uh, go for definitive procedure. Hmm. And then, treatment for anastomotic leak. In cases when there is anastomotic leak and uh, it is followed by generalized peritonitis. May not be a treatment of anastomotic leak, but already as you have said that it can be a for protection of any anastomosis, the itself to ileum. In yes. any unprepared bowel when you are doing a colonic resection, it is helpful even uh, in our routine enteric perforation when the bowel is not good, when you don't think it's a healthy bowel and you would uh, go for a... Uh, Exteriorization. Uh, of, uh, or, yeah, you can simply exteriorize the loop Yes, Following complex anorectal repair, if we are doing rectovaginal or rectourethral fistula repair or in complex perianal fistula for diversion of uh, fecal material, we go for uh, loop, temporary loop ileostomy. And temporary fecal diversion in cases of rectal or perineal trauma in Fournier gangrene radiation proctitis or sacral decubitus ulcer. Again, uh, there is, uh, we can go for loop transverse colostomy in these cases and advantages of both I have discussed later. Sir. Is Fournier, you have read Fournier gangrene somewhere? Uh, sir, Fournier's gangrene with uh, anorectal involvement uh, with, can uh, we, if there is perforation in the rectum, then we will have to See, that is why, because fornia's gangrene per se is a skin subcutaneous, subcutaneous. Yes, sir. Right. I mean, I am yet to see a patient who, in whom colostomy has been done for, or ileostomy done for fornia's. Yeah, we have seen very bad cases of ileo, uh, sorry, uh, this fornia's where we have removed all, I mean, the testes are out and even the perineal is all scared, but, um, but fortunately what I have seen is that most of the time, the patients do well with primary or even uh, Skin grafting and the continuous part is very good. Again, basically because the disease itself is of the Sub skin and the subcutaneous system, not of the muscles. So, I don't know, sir, I have to push you. I have seen a case of colostomy in uh, four years gangrene. I don't know. Yes. For end colostomy, usually when done in uh, non-implant uh, procedures, 
there is a role of enterostomal therapy nurse which are usually accredited by wound ostomy continence nurse society uh, there are principles of preoperative marking which are followed in this i have shown a ostomy triangle uh, formation um, one of the landmark is the umbilicus the other landmark is the uh, topmost point at the transtubercular plane uh, the maximum point of the sacral bone at iliac crest uh, sorry uh, pelvic bone at the iliac crest and pubic symphysis these three uh, from that a uh, perpendiculars are drawn to the opposite a triangle is formed and perpendicular from each point is uh, placed to the opposite edge the point of intersection or the midpoint of this triangle uh, is the usual site where stoma can be done uh, but in these cases we also will have to look uh, for this ostomy triangle uh, has to be adjusted in multiple positions like standing sitting and bending forward and there should be avoidance of any folds scars drain sites postal margin and iliac crest or any uh, bony landmark there is consideration of belt line and the clothing that the patient wears and right paramedian infra umbilical pad within the rectus abdominis muscle the stoma should always come from the uh, later or the mid part of the rectus abdominis muscle uh, this should not be compromised uh, visualization of the stoma should be there to the patient this is another point which should not be uh, compromised uh, because uh, it will uh, he has to manage he or she has to manage the stoma by himself in uh, emergency five uh, landmark 5 cm lateral to the midline and 4 cm below umbilicus will uh, usually provide the point uh, on either side if you are talking about it Iliostomy or colostomy, it should be on either side. Yes. This is true for colostomy also. Yes, sir. And uh, uh, specific consideration to be taken into when we are operating a obese patient, you have to consider the pendulous abdomen. Pendulous abdomen and in upper quadrant, it is easier to, it is better to do in upper quadrant in obese patient with large penis so that he is able to visualize the stoma. Yes, yes, yes. And it does not touch his thighs because if you, if you can so you have to be a little higher up the yes, main sir. point of this is that the the point that you are showing is the pararectal point the point where the the linear thermic uh, this thing goes linear similarity so yeah so the part of the incision should be above it and the part i mean should involve this and a part should be outside yes right okay the surgical technique that we use for end ileostomy uh in a there is a circular incision which is made disc like incision which is made of 2 cm diameter over the later most part of the uh, later to middle part of the rectus abdominis muscle approximately with the center point 4 cm later and 5 cm below the umbilicus at that point 2 cm incision is made and skin of that disc uh, part is amputated following with subcutaneous tissue uh it is theoretically said that uh, we should not remove the entire column of the subcutaneous tissue of the disc shape should only separate the subcutaneous fat and retract it because uh, part of subcutaneous tissue will help in holding the uh, stoma and will prevent relapse or uh, tertiary maturation by the yeah tertiary maturation by the blood vessels that grow from there yes sir the uh, then anterior rectus sheath uh, is reached where a cruciate incision is placed on the uh, anterior rectus sheath and the rectus muscle is split longitudinally then uh, posterior rectus sheath and peritoneum are opened longitudinally and widened with the help of uh, from the midline scar we place our two fingers with continuous traction over the uh, rectus muscle by uh, with the help of a laparotomy sponge and pro- which also helps in protection of the underlying bowel and through this we place our two fingers to three fingers bread and widen the uh, peritoneal opening following which uh, the ileum the ileal part which has to be resected we divide the mesentery such that uh, the uh, marginal artery of drumend in the ileal arcade is maintained so that uh, the 
mesenteric flow to the ileum is not disturbed uh, once that is assured uh, as shown in figure d we bring that part of the ileum along with the mesentery placed in a kefalad position uh, out from the ostomy uh, then from the uh, abdominal amputated part which we have done in the abdominal wall we bring out 4 cm of the ileum outside and following which uh, for maturation for primary maturation we take three point sutures circumferentially four uh, three to four we do not tie them uh, per se in the starting the first suture is taken in full thickness manner at the end of the uh, loop and then at the base of the loop we take a zero muscular suture and then through dermis of the skin to allow eversion of the stoma after taking 3 to 4 uh, and 3 uh, to 4 sutures in this 3 uh, point suture manner uh, we tie it at the end here do we take the sheath or not yes sir do we take it through the sheath or not i said we did not sheath. Yes, sir. For permanent yes. endoliostomy, we take for we it's take sheath at six. Yes. After uh, taking it uh, here in figure F, it is shown that six uh, six three point sutures are taken circumferentially over the stoma, and after that, uh, finally, when it is done, we take sutures circumferentially. Uh, we tie them to create an everting ileum uh, of approximately two centimeter high. this pouting is necessary to allow contents to go into stoma bag directly and avoid uh, peristomal skin excoriation okay have you taken it this in uh, comparison with a temporary i think that will come again what yes, is sir, the difference uh, when so i think we'll take up later on okay so for temporary fecal diversion we can go for both loop colostomy and loop ileostomy advantage in doing loop colostomy is there there is no chance of small bowel there are lesser chances of small bowel obstruction uh, it is easier to close and uh, less incidence of dehydration and renal failure in loop ileostomy there are high chances of stomal output of more than uh, usually it is 500 to 700 ml after adaptation but more the proximal the ileostomy is there are higher chances of uh, more than 1000 ml uh, ileostomy output which can uh, lead to dehydration and ultimately in renal failure which has to be addressed regularly and uh, advantages of loop ileostomy is that there is low incidence of prolapse and there are lesser infectious complications as compared to uh, loop colostomy usually we do for fecal diversion temporary fecal diversion loop colostomy is a better option uh, to uh, and it is more uh, usually done uh, as it is associated with less chances of uh, dehydration and renal failure a uh, surgical technique for loop ileostomy a similar incision of 2 cm nickel uh, or disc like incision is placed in the right uh, infraumbilical fat pad region through the rectus muscle uh, between the semi uh, linea semilunaris and the linea alba and uh, through that again uh, subcutaneous tissue is separated a uh, cruciate incision But is placed you don't need also you don't need to remove the disc of the skin See, basically in temporary ileostomy, you are going to put it back, and you want the skin to close. Yes. Why? See, there are two, three things that are important. At the, have have you taken comparison of the uh, or the differences in end and loop loop stomies? Uh, see no, what sir. happens. What happens? What happens in end ileostomy? Most of the time, the end ileostomies are plant surgeries. The the size or the of the bowel is almost normal there is no not much edema there are not much inflammation in the bowel whereas whenever you are doing a temporary ileostomy most of the time the bowel which is being brought out it has got uh, features they are dilated bowel the wall is edematous so there are so many things 
so it goes on fluctuating see in, uh, in uh, if you, if you see uh, and soma it remains what you have done whatever you at the the end result at, on day 1 the same result you see on at the end of day 7 the chances yes. of changes including prolapse are less when it comes to uh, permanent ileostomy whenever you are doing a temporary ileostomy most of the time the bowel is huge most say obstruction yes, bowel probably malignancy or whatever the reason may be or say even in enteric uh, the bowel yes, is so it is right yes so it's so fragile so it matters so we have to take all these things into consideration and accordingly we make uh, the opening again but because the edema subsides you need to understand that if you have not uh, made a make a big see the edema increases after surgery yes sir you must have seen the the the, the yes, stomach is common edema is a common yeah. yes so is that you have to consider when you are making an opening in temporary again at the same time the opening should not be big enough so that when the edema subsides it prol- it goes inside retraction yes retraction right so we're making a temporary stoma is a little tricky whereas making a sto- stoma in permanent ileostomy the making of stoma itself not the size is tricky yes sir sir we also do a uh, incision of approximately 4 cm in length straight oblique incision placed over the rec- uh, infra umbilical pad of uh, fat sir uh, that yeah. is also used in uh, cases of loop ileostomy we do in emergency okay and following which uh, again uh, the once the rectus sheath is reached a cruciate incision is placed and rectus muscle is split and posterior sheath and uh, peritoneum are opened by a longitudinal incision and uh, from the laparotomy scar we place our hand and a uh, two finger widening is done once the two finger widening is uh, done the loop of uh, ilium which is approximately 20 to 30 cm in length and pro- uh, 30, 20 to 30 cm proximal to the ileocecal junction or in cases of uh, enteric perforation where directly we uh, bring out the ileal segment and exteriorize the perforation in those cases of approximately 20 to 30 cm size of uh, ileum is brought out and uh, the segments uh, mesent such that the segments mesentery and vascularity are preserved now uh, marking sutures may be placed to mark proximal and distal end uh, if uh, a junior is doing surgery the ileum is advanced through the abdominal wall stoma aperture so that it pro- protrudes 3 to 4 cm beyond the skin level as shown uh, here approximate size of this height is approximately 4 cm sir uh, following which the ileum is incised 1 cm above the skin level on the efferent limb side so here 1 cm above the efferent uh, limb sir and approximately 75% of the circumference uh, is cut transversely or longitudinal incision can also be placed if a bleeding is a concern uh, to create a large efferent spout and a smaller efferent uh, spout the orientation is such that the efferent loop comes uh, medially and superiorly while uh, the efferent loop comes inferiorly and uh, laterally sir to allow a proper drainage and uh, of the uh, ileal fecal material or feculent material into the uh, stoma bag of importance is again here nowadays i think we don't even take the sheath or the peritoneum we directly take it with the skin considering yes. that it has to be removed in say two uh, maximum two months time four to six weeks we yes, are sir. supposed to put right but people do take some people do take it with sheath but over a period we have seen that it is easier if we take simply skin uh, it is easy to remodel and uh, easy to put it back yes so then uh, again three points which are taken uh, at the efferent limb and the efferent limb uh, approximately six in number circumferentially and in between two point sutures full thickness of the uh, ileum loop at the edge and uh, at the base with the dermis is taken 
in two point sutures uh, approximately again six in number or pertaining how much adequacy of pouting is required and once the uh, it it has pouted uh, the afferent limb approximately comes out to be a size of 2 to 3 cm from the uh, skin edge and uh, the efferent uh, approximately 1 uh, cm from the see skin edge. Uh, again also see pouting in temporary ileostomy is not required for one reason it's a loop stoma it is always going to be higher up see when we are talking about an end ileostomy only one loop is coming out which juts just above the skin so you need to keep it just above so that it flows very well yes when we are talking about loop ileostomy the whole loop comes out again it's a very edematous loop and you don't need to even take sutures with the edge of the bowel you can keep it as it is yes because it has to flow out once because you are you are already maturing with the skin the fecal yes, matter is got going to go inside right so pouting it is, because it is edematous it is always going to be out their their pouting is very much required basically because of normal bowel wedge that we are bringing out yes sir uh, sir i uh, read about pouting only for the purpose that it allows uh, proper drainage into a stoma bag otherwise yes 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 fine uh, okay the, a mesenteric window is created within the uh, bowel uh, mesentery uh, a vascular window and through that a glass rod of approximate diameter of uh, 16 uh, french is 16 to 18 french is inserted to uh, till there is proper maturation usually on post op day 7 to 10 we remove this iron rod uh, uh, plastic you, rod do you use rod. do you use glass rods no sir we use uh, infant feeding tube in these cases in yeah, our setup yes no no it is it is fair enough and it is good enough i mean you don't need a rod always rather yes. infant feeding is i would say even that uh, red rubber is better because it provides some fibrosis it will produce an early maturation yes see sir. rod glass glass rods are inert materials they don't actually allow the maturation to occur to the uh, and uh, some fibrosis to occur i yes. think uh, it is better to put in plastic or rubber tubes rubber tube yeah uh, red rubber tube is uh, ideal ideally place in 16 to 18 french uh, red rubber tube or silicon catheter can be used so the idea is that till the maturation uh, is the i mean occurs we uh, they does not slip inside the abdomen yes sir for uh, okay. secondary maturation to prevent retraction till secondary maturation has occurred we... yes okay uh, types of minimally invasive ileostomies uh, trephine ileostomy small incision is chosen at the ostomy site uh, which can be again at the intraumbilical portion of the uh, rectus muscle in right lower quadrant or left lower quadrant it is usually successful in 89 to 94% times it is usually done in uh, patients in whom uh, ileostomy or diversion is required uh, but patient are suffering from severe sepsis and not fit for uh, general anesthesia uh, so this is a procedure which can be done uh, under local anesthesia or spinal anesthesia uh, it is successful 89 to 94% of times but uh, result in function uh, result is also equal to open or laparoscopic creation of the ileostomy when urgent uh, fecal diversion is required for this patient. again see when you talk about uh, local or general anesthesia i have doubts see uh abdomen is made up of muscles and most of the muscles are both voluntarily and involuntarily supplied so if you try doing it under local you can put an incision on the abdomen under local but as soon as you try to uh, manipulate the bowel it contracts yes so in so, most of such cases what you can do is a tube stomy tube uh, yes sir for decompression colostomy uh, like in tube cecostomy yes. can be done uh, but it's not a good thing of course you can as you say that it can be used and as a last resort yes sir but doing stomas under local anesthesia uh, beware 
yes sir. then uh, laparoscopically loop ileostomy can also be created uh, there is uh, the triangulation occurs from the opposite side uh, from where if we are planning to do ileostomy on right side the triangulation is usually done from the uh, left side of the abdomen and advantages of doing minimally invasive ileostomies include less post operative pain less adhesions enhanced recovery and uh, decreased chances of adhesions leading to decreased chances of small bowel obstruction post so no no one 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 minute you said laparoscopic loop ileostomy so uh, you want to say that you do only lap, uh, ileostomy by laparoscopy right you don't do anything else in the abdomen uh, is it so no sir in case of uh, no sir on, in cases where uh, laparoscopic right hemicolectomy or uh, laparoscopy yes, yes. okay so so when you are doing a when you are doing an operative procedure through laparoscopy and then you, you want to do a diversion ileostomy then in that case is it's fine yes and again in those cases you don't you don't actually do a laparoscopic procedure you put in an incision you see through the scope and you have to put an incision see i don't know how do you call it a laparoscopic ileostomy because ultimately everything is to be done from the wall you don't i mean do you cut yes, the sir. abdomen from inside when you are doing through laparoscopy uh, no sir in these conditions uh, only visualization from the laparoscope uh, from the videoscopic port is done and it is rather it is that when you are doing a procedure laparoscopically you keep the ports as such and you open the abdomen through one side and you what at the most you can do is you can hold the desired loop with a bowel grasper and bring it out through the oh. wall so that you don't need, you don't have to fidget, fidget around with other bowel the sir. the part that you want to bring it out that can be identified and held held against the abdominal wall that is what i feel because otherwise there is no role of laparoscopy as such yes sir uh, sir it is done to avoid a laparotomy scar uh, so that ileostomy uh, ileum the segment of the ileum can be brought out with the bowel grasper and uh, brought out to the incision that we have placed for stoma Uh, yes, yes. It is not okay. actually. You can think that it's a laparoscopy assisted ileostomy. Yes, so sir. You cannot yes. do a ileostomy through laparoscopy. So it's a laparoscopy assisted ileostomy. Assisted ileostomy in patients who who have already been undergoing laparoscopic surgery. As you said, if you are doing a hemicolectomy or you are in a cerectum and you want to preserve your anastomosis, protect your anastomosis by an ileostomy. By an ileostomy. Ileostomy. Yes. In those cases, as you as I said, you can just uh, mark. the bowel with a bowel grasper and then you open the uh, then you do everything as per the open technique yes sir only for bringing out okay. the bowel loop sir in ileostomy no not yes, for sir, bringing out laparoscopic assisted loop ileostomy yes it should be only for marking what part of bowel you want to bring out understand that well you yes, cannot sir. bring out the bowel through laparoscopic instrument you can just mark it so that when you are picking up the bowel through the ileostomy site you will come to know that you have picked up the exact you don't have to visit for the bowel yes sir when you are doing a blind procedure simple ileostomy you have to pull out the bowel whether you have reached the terminal ileum or not correct but here because you have already held it with a laparoscopic instrument you know yeah this is my bowel and i need to bring it out yes sir right okay continue uh continent ileostomy also known as cox uh continent ileostomy uh it comprises as an an internal ileal reservoir that stores stool and gas between intubations the intubation is shown uh the intubation is done through the skin level stoma uh and the uh from where the evacuation of the bowel contents occur in the ileum uh, in between these two there is a valvular mechanism which is made uh by doing an intersusception over the loop which is brought out this is the intersusceptible part uh it is done iatrogenically so that a valvular create uh, valve is created one way valve is created over the uh, upper part of the uh, loop uh, as shown here there is uh, it stores tools and gas between intubations a stoma and outflow tract needed to intubate and evacuate the contents of the reservoir and a surgically created biological valve is interposed between the two components by surgical intersusception to act as a pressure barrier and provide continence this uh, to empty this reservoir regular intubation by a red rubber catheter tube 
uh, catheter is done and from that we evacuated uh, regularly on regular basis uh, for early or six early uh, currently indication for cox uh, ileostomy is patient with a current brook ileostomy or end ileostomy with no possibility of ileal pouch anal anastomosis who want to improve their quality of life and decrease the amount of uh, decrease the amount of uh, pouching abnormalities or difficulty in a uh, patient having difficulty in pouching or maintaining a uh, uh, pouch uh, patient requiring proctocolectomy who wish to uh, preserve continence but are not suitable for an ileo anal anastomosis uh, patients with failed ileal pouch anal anastomosis who desire to preserve continence and avoid an external appliance if failure is unrelated to crohn's disease or severe pouch arthritis uh, it is discouraged in elderly patients psychiatric patient critically ill patient and obese patient uh, and those having crohn's disease uh, because there will be difficulty in intubation and they want and stoma is uh, the stoma output as we can see is there is no pouting it is at the level of the skin so obese patients and elderly patients might have difficulty in identifying it and uh, uh, allowing uh, in, intubation of it by red rubber catheter in obese patient the anus is also more sir ek minute kaun so madam ke keh rahe hain ha this this con this continent ileostomy is, uh, is the, not done only for the uh total proctectomy what about the urinary system diversion have you read about it uh sir remember uh, it can be done by doing making an ileum reservoir which is in uh, both uh, ureters can be transplanted over the uh, pouch that we have made or an uh, ileal loop separately we can uh, if we have to do an incontinent part for urinary diversion then a segment of ileum is taken and uh, a skin level stoma is created and the proximal end is closed and uh, both the ureters are uh, trans uh, positioned over the uh, so island this is the main indication of this continent ileostomy particularly in a urinary diversion uh, particularly yes, if patient is having a pelvis uh, malignancy into the pelvis and then you have to do the total uh, this uh, removal of the bladder blood or blood if blood. patient is not able to do a uh, patient is having congenital uh, extra uh, fee of the bladder and you, uh, you patient requires diversion so malignancy and some irreversible congenital conditions in which you have to transplant you both ureter into the this uh, ileal pouch right yes. so you have to step, uh, cut the part of the ileum make it as a ileal pouch Yes. like this continent pouch and both the uh, ureters are implanted in, into this ileal pouch so yes. urine when urine is collected in the, to the ileal pouch when patient is feeling some fullness then the patient will pass the catheter through this and evacuate the urine uh, yes. so this ileal pouch mainly nowadays is used for the this only mm? Uh, in total proctocolectomy, as already see, what happens is over a period of time, it happens that the patient himself has a uh, capability of passing once or twice a day. The frequency is reduced so much, and what you know, what we call colonization of the ileum. Ileum. The Adapt ileum becomes yeah adaptation. So, so initially, uh, this patient six seven days patient is passing uh, uh, this fecal matter through the ileostomy, but later on it is two or three times only. Yes. Yeah. within one year they are passing two or three times yeah complicated complications of uh, cock continent ileostomy include failed wall uh, which requires revision surgery or conversion to brooks ileostomy efferent limb intubation difficulty which again requires uh, revision surgery or conversion to brooks ileostomy and pouchitis syndrome uh which should be initially managed conservatively by iv antibiotics and hydration uh if it does not respond then conversion to brooks ileostomy is mandatory uh nearly 10 to 20% of the patient operated also, one one thing i forgot is uh in a pouch colon huh? what is pouch colon uh ma'am in neonates when there is a, a 
anorectal malformation where there is complete atresia of the anal canal uh, within 48 hours the uh, no not necessary the pouch colon doesn't mean there is a complete atresia of the anal canal it may be a normal anal canal or uh, hold the colon is not having any meso colon meso. that is known as a pouch colon no meso colon and the whole the colon is distended uh, converted uh, into a pouch like structure ha uh, it is just like a pouch Yes. and so in that case as you have said this uh, so if uh, uh, sometimes you can do this type of continent not the ileostomy but continent colostomy uh, mm. like this stoma is done like that okay so this is one differential diagnosis if patient is having pouch colon so you will see very large air fluid level yes single like, large air fluid level crossing midline uh, crossing the midline and so so very large air fluid level in a newborn baby there are three diagnoses one is uh, as we know is, is because of the pyloric stenosis hypertrophic uh, pylorus yes right so that in which there is a large uh, air fluid level is because of this stomach second is because of this pouch colon and third if there is any perforation mm, and fluid is collected and air is collected into the peritoneal cavity very large colon is seen sigmoid colon is for the uh, valvulus of sigmoid colon is mm. four that is for the adult uh, in the pediatric patient newborn baby you will not found that large yes. sigmoid okay continue Moving on to colostomy, uh, types of colostomy on the basis of function, diverting or defunctioning colostomy. Uh, temporary diverting colostomy usually done uh, is loop colostomy. The purpose is uh, for protection of distal anastomosis, uh, like in uh, cases of colorectal anastomosis done for sigmoid colon carcinoma or sigmoid diverticulitis, uh, grossly infected diverticulitis. Uh, traumatic injuries to the colon or rectum and multiple complicated and high perianal fistula then uh, temporary diverting end colostomy uh, done in hartman's procedure for uh, pelvic sepsis following uh, diverticular perforation or uh, rectal perforation uh, where sigmoid colon has to be resected and distal end of the sigmoid colon could not be brought out or uh, there is rectal stump which cannot be brought out uh and permanent diverting colostomy uh, or end colostomy in cases of perforated unresectable rectal carcinoma or unrepairable damage to the rectum or anus in cases of chronic disease or severe perianal trauma hereditary subjective infection so out of this all list which are the most common hmm? in your what you see Yes. What you have seen, uh, sir? Uh, mostly we do for traumatic injuries to colon or rectum and sigmoid uh, diverticular perforation. So pelvic fracture. Keep in mind, yes. pelvic fracture with bladder injury or bladder neck injury, in which you think that the, if there will be a leak of urine, there will be a injury to the rectum and anal canal. Or the sigmoid colon, and you are. It is even if you are repaired, it may give rise to leak. So please continue. Uh, decompression colostomy, which is temporary, uh, provides decompression of hugely dilated large bowel proximal to obstructing the growth of the rectum or the sigmoid colon. It is an emergency procedure to prevent impending rupture of dilated colon proximal to obstruction. It is a life-saving procedure. and it provides for subsequent definitive surgery without compromising the principles of oncological resection uh, if required uh, in as in cases of uh, the types of uh, decompression colostomy done are loop transverse colostomy blow hole stoma constructed in cecum or transverse colon and tube cecostomy pardon pardon cecum uh, yes ma'am cecum tube uh, It is uh, mostly located in the subcutaneous space, so cecum uh, uh, is dilated. If more than twelve centimeter, twelve uh, uh, centimeter dilatation of cecum is present, then tube uh, cecostomy can be done to decompress the bowel. Which book you have read? From which book you took this cecostomy? 
in a pediatric patient newborn baby if it patient is having uh, impacted meconium uh, so meconium ileus is there and if you want to treat patient is not fit for anesthesia having another congenital anomaly in that case appendix is removed and then from this the base of the appendix uh, tube cecostomy is done to give distal wash only right yes sir and proximal ileostomy is done so you can do uh, ileum to the cecum distal wash and so by the time child grows further surgery is done right yes ma'am so this is only the indication of cecostomy uh, otherwise nobody is doing cecostomy now so keep in mind don't speak in exam okay continue and don't say about anything about bhattacharyan ha uh, bhattacharya you have to refer for the short cases only not about all these things because you have to read the uh, textbook and speak about the textbook only right okay the basis of duration colostomy can be divided into temporary or permanent uh, considerations while doing a colostomy distal descending colon or proximal sigmoid colon is preferred for end colostomy distal sigmoid colon is not used for end stoma as collateral supply is irregular to the sigmoid colon and sigmoidal arteries are end arteries uh, and double barrel sigmoidostomy can be done in cases of pelvic sepsis with perforated uh, diverticulitis for the first year will, will you say what do you mean by double barrel stoma what is the difference between loop stoma and double barrel stoma for the first year Ma'am, when we have to do a resection of the uh, colon or uh, bowel loop, that there are two different uh, ends, a proximal end and a distal end, which has to be brought out. The proximal end acts as the fecal diver for fecal diversion, and the distal end uh, acts as the mucus fistula for drainage of mucus and uh, in future to provide uh, distal wash. Uh, we bring it out from the same uh, stoma opening. And uh, by one of the two procedures, uh, Paul Mikulic's or uh, Mikulic's procedure, or by divine procedure, it's a uh, simple thing. You have to say in simple. In loop stomy, you are bringing the loop of the bowel out. While in double barrel stomy, you do the resection and bring both the loop out. Both the loop. Both the opening down. Ah, both the loop out. That is a short and sweet answer, right? Okay. Continue. The transverse colon is most commonly used for uh, temporary loop colostomy, but there are disadvantages of using transverse colon. Uh, there is increased peristaltic contraction in transverse colon, which can lead to more chances of prolapse and retraction. Uh, liquid foul smelling effluent initially comes from the transverse colon, which later converts to uh, fecal uh, material. So stoma appliance initially is difficult. Uh, Posterior wall of the distal limb retracts after six weeks, causing incomplete fecal diversion. There is flow into the uh, distal limb uh, usually after six weeks. So, uh, for temporary purpose only, we can bring a, a transverse loop colostomy out. 
and we are planning a definitive surgery six weeks or uh, later pre operative planning uh, the site is selected in end colostomy the site selection uh, is an important uh, thing which should be done by enterostomal therapy nurse uh the site selected in most individuals is few centimeters inferior lateral to umbilicus overlying the rectus abdominis muscle either on right side or left side uh stoma is constructed where it will be visible to the patient so in uh, uh these patients it is usually a little higher up over the panus of the abdomen and uh, away from the umbilicus the scar bony prominence or skin crease uh i have also mentioned this previously sir in iliostoma hmm Uh, technique for end colostomy uh, a circular disc yes ma'am ah ma'am uh, keep your uh, uh, yourself muted because there is some other voice from your mobile ma'am wo ek much hoya to koi che to mai ani mai mute kar dau okay ha karan ke kai bijo awaaz aave che sathe sathe etle mai check karyu ne to ema tara ma thi aave che etle jare bolvano hoy tare unmute kar ha okay uh in figure a we are uh, seeing the site where the incision has to be placed a 2 cm uh, diameter uh, circular incision is placed in the left side uh, para umbilical and inferior in the inferior inferior part of the para umbilical region in the fat pad uh, through which the stoma has to be brought out this 2 cm uh, diameter circular inc skin incision is placed and the skin part is amputated then uh, the subcutaneous fat is uh, open how will you uh, keep circular incision how will you keep circular incision uh remember trephine technique we uh, do a uh, two diameters diagonally we make 2 cm 2 cm uh, uh lines are pre operatively marked with in a cross like fashion trephine fashion and uh, then the entire uh, and the ends of the lines are then joined uh, to each other forming a complete 2 cm circular disc like in see so it is not clear what you say see uh, you have uh, to mark the point before uh, before the doing this stoma by applying the stoma back huh? temporary stoma back ask the patient to sit on the uh, toilet as uh, and uh, while leaning the, uh, forward they have to check it that it is not into the skin crease that is first thing then yes. whatever the point is selected at that point 2 cm cross incision is kept hmm? you have to make a cross first you have to make mark it as a circle but you have to make a cross incision so it will be just like you are doing ind into the perianal region right so it is a cruciate incision yes. and after cruciate putting in. the cruciate incision all the four cruciates uh, are cut One fourth part of that is cut, so now it will become lifting it and making circular incision. This is not done routinely, right? If you are having the cautery, particularly skin cautery, in that you just mark with the tip of the step knife and whatever the circle you have marked that is to be cut with the tip of the knife, and then with the cautery you can just make it refine. But routinely, you have to make a cruciate incision and then make a trephine, right? So it is yes. a circular skin is removed. Why do you want to remove the circular skin? Um, ma'am, to allow the end. Uh, ma'am, it would be easier to take a three point suture in a circular skin incision rather than a. and uh, it will also decrease so this is a permanent stoma uh, this define is done only in permanent stoma uh, permanent stoma yes. right for temporary you are putting on a oblique incision only. oblique incision only. yeah uh, but if you are doing permanent stoma you do not want any complication of stenosis this is a permanent stoma and so you are making the lumen and skin is excess so fall in this will be a permanent thing And yes. so it should fit snugly fit with the skin so it is elastic skin is elastic 
so later on it will also heal by fibrosis uh, by yes, six months so you do not want it to end up with the stenosis yes. right so you are remove and that two centimeter of then subcutaneous tissue is retracted and following which a cruciate incision is placed over the anterior rectus sheath. Uh, rectus muscle is separated longitudinally and underlying uh, posterior sheath and peritoneum are opened in a longitudinal fashion. Following which from the laparotomy scar we introduce our hand and two fingers are introduced into the opening from the posterior rectus sheath uh, and peritoneum and two, uh, two finger breadth widening is done in the uh, posterior rectus sheath. Following which uh, the resected uh, the colon uh, the part of the colon descending uh, colon usually uh, which has to be brought out is first mobilized by uh, doing metoc uh, <coughs> by doing kettle brush maneuver and uh, up, if required splenic flexure can also be mobilized and uh, after checking the uh, major artery of drummond that uh, the end uh, at the end of the colostomy, there is proper mesenteric uh, vascular supplies there and the uh, colostomy part uh, that we have to bring out is viable. Then we bring uh, under, it should not be brought in tension. Without tension, if it is coming out, we uh, bring through the uh, rectus, uh, posterior rectus sheath into the amputated skin part. And then uh, we bring it out for approximately 4 centimeter length uh, from the uh, uh, from the skin uh, base base or the skin of uh, the patient. Uh, then uh, the distal end of the uh, if we have used the stapler, then the distal end of the stapler line is cut. And uh, or if we have not used the stapler, then simply three point sutures at six points are taken, uh, which we keep freely initially. And uh, once all the sutures are taken, then we uh, tie. Uh, the suture to the skin. Again, in three points, uh, one uh, suture is taken at the uh, at the end, uh, full thickness, including mucosa. At the base, we take a zero muscular uh, suture from the uh, bowel wall, and the dermis of the skin is taken. And then eversion occurs uh, once we tie all of them. Uh, since we have mobilized the colon by uh, from the paracolic gutter uh, from the white line of salt the mesenteric defect will be created which should be close to prevent inter future internal hernia so should i yeah continue continue so uh, technical loop colostomy uh, in this pro process uh, skin incision is placed uh, in left usually uh, depending upon the portion of the colon that has to be brought out in transverse colon usually it is the right transverse colostomy which is done if we are bringing out sigmoid colon these are the two uh, possible uh, uh, loop colostomies that we do in uh, large colon either sigmoid loop colostomy or a transverse loop colostomy. In transverse loop colostomy, usually it is uh, brought out from the uh, right side based on the right uh, colic artery or the right side, right front of the middle uh, colic artery. Uh, based on these, we bring out the uh, transverse colostomy and sigmoid colostomy is uh, in while doing sigmoid colostomy, we will have to be very careful while dealing with the mesentery of the sigmoid colon as sigmoidal arteries are end arteries, so it should not be compromised. Uh, transverse colon is easier to bring out because it has a very uh, long mesentery. Uh, so, uh, while doing so, we uh, make a circular incision, or uh, if we are doing an emergency, uh, an oblique incision is placed over the a uh, supra umbilical fat region for right transverse colostomy uh, in the rectus uh, over the uh, in area between to the same uh, linea alba and the uh, linea semilunaris. Uh, from the oblique incision, we oblique incision or a transverse incision, so both are both can be used. So, uh, uh, 
after uh, take, doing the incision, once we have read the rect anterior rectus sheath, we make a cruciate incision, separate the rectus muscle longitudinally, open the peritoneum longitude, uh, posterior rectus sheath and peritoneum longitudinally. And from the laparotomy incision, we bring out the loop of colon that we will have to uh, bring out uh, as seen in the lowermost part of the figure. Uh, once it has uh, been brought out, a mesentric window is created and a uh, rubber, red rubber catheter of 16 to 18 French uh, is uh, passed through the mesentric window. And once it has been brought out, uh, the uh, colostomy is opened. Uh, here we have shown transverse leap, but there are more chances of bleeding. We should ideally open it uh, longitudinally, sir, along the tinea coli. Uh, Sir, so we uh, again take uh, three point sutures over the distal and the proximal limb uh, circumferentially. Six sutures are taken at equidistant location, and uh, to support it, two point sutures are also taken, sir. In between. So the technique remains the same. Yes, the sir. only thing is of importance over here is, especially when you are doing the transverse colon, is mobilization of the uh, omentum from the colon and in either of the colon, you need to uh, remove the appendices epiploica so that a well-formed part of colon itself comes. See, yes, otherwise it will prolapse. If you take the appendix epiploica and if it gets necros later on, the yes, opening sir. becomes bigger yes. as compared to the... Yes, so, sir. aumental and the appendix epiploica is two things. You need to take care properly, which is not there in the ileostomy. Yes, sir. Yes, okay. Whenever patient you are doing this transverse colostomy, when there is a uh, in emergency, when the resection is not possible, so it is a edematous bowel, right? And you are not removing the omentum, so opening will become very large. So later on, there will be a prolapse of the stoma. That that complication is very common. Right? Yes, so to prevent this, you have to do like this. Okay. Uh, double barrel colostomy. Uh, it is. Uh, in Paul Miklik's technique, it is performed for poor risk patients in whom resection and anastomosis is not possible in the same uh, setting. So, uh, perforated sigmoid colon carcinoma or in cases of sigmoid volvulus, uh, where resection is done and uh, anastomosis is not possible due to discrepancy of the bowel or edematous bowel or low vascularity, if we are thinking there is a low vascularity present at the bowel end, then we uh, bring out the two ends of the bowel uh, from the same uh, incision site as we use for transverse colostomy or uh, uh, usual colostomy site incisions. And once they both are uh, brought out, we take the uh, suture in the posterior uh, layer. In Paul Mikulik's technique, uh, the adjacent walls of the two limbs of the colon uh, below the colostomy opening uh, are sewn together at the anti mesentric border, as shown in the figure, uh, to form a spur like structure. Uh, it is done because once we will have to reverse it, a simple enterotomy and the suturing of the anterior layer would suffice to close this stoma. It also allows for fecal diversion. The distal limb acts as a mucous fistula and the proximal and uh, allows for fecal diversion. And second is the divine procedure in which two separate loops are uh, brought out with a skin subcutaneous and muscular bridge present in between the uh, two exteriorized ends. Uh, this one end will act as a, a mucus fistula and uh, one end will act as uh, for fecal diversion. In these cases, uh, we will have to uh, perform closure, we will have to do it intraperitoneally and go for a laparotomy for uh, while closing this uh, stoma, sir. So, what is the specific indication for this type of procedure, ma'am? When uh, it is not po possible to bring out the two ends of the, there is extensive resection and two ends are uh, not possible to brought out from the same incision. Same that is incision. one thing. And second thing is, if you have done anastomosis distally, if you have done anterior resection, uh, anterior resection is there. Previously, people were doing it. Once you have done anterior resection and you want to bring out this sigmoid colon out, 
so distally you can do this type of fissurous tract and uh, mucous fistula and so or in a trauma patients you have done repair of the perforation in the lower down mm. and you can make the make this type so so though no leakage proximal loop from which it is a diverting stoma you are applying stoma bag there another small stoma bag is applied at the lower end or you lower can end. apply simple saline gospis dressing there and the mucus fistula so yeah. no spillage or fecal matter occurs into the it is a really diverting stoma real sense diverting stoma so nothing yes, will go there will be no incomplete fecal there will be complete fecal diversion yeah complete fecal diversion yeah okay now moving on to the complications of uh, uh stoma stoma in uh, per se uh, both colostomy and ileostomy i have deal together which uh, complication is more common in colostomy or loop uh, we will discuss in individual uh, basis of the complication uh, early complications which occur within one month period of uh, stoma formation include skin irritation including cellulitis or in cases of uh, crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis in which there is uh, extra uh, intestinal manifestations pyoderma gangrenosum is a common uh, problem which occurs around the skin of uh, where from where stoma has been brought out uh, then stoma necrosis uh, obstruction in the stoma uh, or uh, ileostomy diarrhea mucocutaneous separation stoma retraction are usually early uh, complications how will you diagnose ileostomy diarrhea uh, ma'am if there is a persistent output of more than 1000 ml from the ileostomy uh, site which is uh, foul smelling uh, and watery inconsistency may or may not contain your food patient product. your patient is stable patient is taking all orally and everything is going on but one fine morning patient says patient is having uh, stoma output is 2 liter hmm? yes ma'am so normally patient is having around 1 liter or 1.2 liter and now it is more than 2 liter then it should come in your mind that patient is having diarrhea yes so it is a ileostomy diarrhea and only treatment is as you treat diarrhea diarrhea right so you have to treat like a diarrhea okay late complications which occur after one month of stoma formation include stoma stenosis uh, which can be a, a sequelae to stoma necrosis uh, or prolonged stoma obstruction uh, stoma prolapse parastomal hernia uh, enteroenteric fistula uh, and uh, stomal varices in cases of uh, liver parenchymal disease stoma stenosis are you able to hear me yes ma'am ah, so much stenosis is two causes see one as you say patient may have you have find out in the stoma there is a sub immediate post operatively there is a little bit ischemia is seen later on it is healed and now patient is there the stenosis second is sometimes whenever you are doing the end stoma you are suturing the stoma with this extra yes. oblique yes. aponeurosis right yes ma'am so at that stitch site there will be a little bit leakage so that leakage is not noticed at that time so it is peri uh, at the between the stoma and the skin there will be a little bit purulent discharge it is not leaking inside it is leaking outside so initial there is a purulent discharge so inflammation yes. persists so any any patient your any of your patient who is having stoma bed and you find out there is little bit pus discharge this thing should come in your mind yes so later on after 20 days you can do the uh, pass the finger and see it that is there any opening is palpable inside not before 20 days right if it is yeah. too much discharge then you can do uh, assessing that stoma early also but if it is a very min minute discharge then before changing your stoma bag you uh, you have to palpate it and see that if there is any discharge is there or not so sometime if it is at more areas or not only one area but if it is more area patient is having too much edematous stoma uh, bowel and so more two three sides it has leaked so those because of the persistent inflammation those patient may also develop stenosis stenosis right okay continue parastomal skin complications include uh, dermatitis pseudo varicose lesions which are due to chronic irritation by ileostomic uh, 
content. Uh, then pyoderma gangrenosum in cases of extra intestinal manifestation of uh, Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis and superficial infection with uh, Staphylococcus or Candida causing folliculitis and Candidiasis in peristomal uh, region. Uh, for all of these, uh, ideally only uh, conservative management is uh, required. For pyoderma gangrenosum, we give steroids. For folliculitis, we uh, give injectable uh, uh, augment uh, amoxicillin and clavulonic acid. For candidiasis, we give fluconazole. Uh, for dermatitis and pseudovaricous lesions, uh, for a pseudovaricous lesion, potassium permanganate uh, soaks are placed over the varicose lesions. Once they dry off, scaling occurs, they are removed. And for dermatitis, uh, uh, normal uh, lactocalamine lotion and uh, aluminium oxide application is done. Zinc oxide. Uh, sorry, ma'am, zinc oxide. Mm. Uh, Ereostomy diarrhea. When effluent amount is more than one liter, uh, it is usually associated with fluid and electrolyte imbalance. We should go for an urgent uh, RFT also in this patient, uh, patient and look for urine output in these cases as patients are prone to develop uh, acute renal failure. Uh, management includes uh, IV fluid uh, correction of the IV fluid, uh, electrolyte correction, use of drugs like loperamide or use of bulking agent like isabgol husk. Uh, stoma necrosis, it occurs within 24 to 72 hours of surgery. Initially, there is a cyanosis or sloughing, which indicates uh, impending necrosis. Uh, risk factors include hypovolemia during surgery, hypotension, edema or tearing of mesentery. Uh, we should uh, not apply a uh, non-transparent or opaque bag in these cases. Uh, we should apply a transparent pouch through which a digital examination uh, can also be done. Uh, we should do a digital e examination to assess the facial opening if there is any stenosis present in the facial opening or if uh, there is disruption present at the facial opening or any bogey swelling is present. If there is a uh, blackening of the mucosa, we can, uh, if we are able to visualize the blackening of the mucosa above the skin level. And a test. So, ischemia and necrosis, how will you differentiate ischemia and necrosis? Ma'am, in ischemia, there is only... So, uh, necrosis requires surgery. Ischemia, we can wait. Yes, ma'am. In ischemia, we can wait and uh, increase the... Correct the hypovolemia or hypotension, which is causing it. Uh, uh, then, test tube test is uh, done in the bedside region to in which I, we insert a clear test tube into the stoma and inspect with a flashlight to check if uh, the necrosis is going beyond the fascia into the uh, peri uh, into the intra-abdominal cavity or if it is present uh, just above the facial opening. If necrosis is extending beneath the fascia, it requires re-exploration with bowel reception and new stoma formation. If necrosis is not extending beneath the level of the uh, uh, facial layers, expected management with regular checking through the test tube test should be done and signs of peritonitis or mucocutaneous separation should be assessed. Uh, long standing. You are setting the finger or you are assessing it. If there is a peristalsis, uh, you can see the peristalsis into the stoma. Yes, ma'am. That is most important thing. Hmm? If peristalsis are seen, it means it is having viability. And that is yes, viability. Or some oozing yes. is there because of the increased edema and all these things. Some oozing is there. So that is an indication that you can wait. If color is now dusky then and uh, no peristalsis are seen, then you should think about exploration, right? Okay, continue. Yes. If uh, long-standing ischemia is present, then it can lead to stenosis or mucocutaneous separation later on. Obstruction in the uh, ileostomy, it is more common in ileostomies. Most commonly, it is due to edema at the level of the fascia in immediate post-op period. Uh, and uh, we have to go for digital examination to diagnose at the level of the fascia if there is any stenosis. Uh, ileostomy blockage is there, then we have to insert a 24 number Foley's French catheter, uh, inflate 3 ml in the balloon and irrigate with uh, 50 ml saline. If there is a clean return, whatever we have inserted comes out uh, through the uh, stoma uh, within few minutes or uh, immediately, then uh, uh, we have to suspect a proximal obstruction, usually in cases of Crohn's uh, disease. 
uh, a water soluble contrast study either cct abdomen pelvis or barium follow through is done in these cases uh, if there is ileostomy uh, if on giving this uh, 50 ml saline challenge food particles comes we have to suspect there is a food blockage we are have to continue irrigation uh, with warm saline until stoma function returns and uh, in these cases also we will have to explain the patient the uh, type of food uh, or bulking uh, that he should uh, have a dietitian references required in these cases uh, if the, in uh, stomal edema cases initially we can just uh, do wait and watch uh, intubation of stoma following which uh, continuing irrigation uh, has to be done uh, if not relieved on its own and once it starts functioning uh, we can it is a good sign in mucocutaneous separation it can occur in immediate post operative period or in a delayed fashion uh, we will have to assess for stoma retraction necrosis abscess or fistula abs uh, fistula formation and abscess uh, formation uh, also in necrosis uh, these three are usually uh, late causes of uh, delayed uh, when mucocutaneous separation occurs in a delayed fashion uh, we will, we should assess for necrosis abscess and fistula at the level of the fascia uh, and to assess for uh, if there is a stoma retraction uh, present after mucocutaneous separation it is usually in immediate post operative period uh, treatment starts with uh, optimization of general wound healing parameters such as nutrition uh, stop uh, we will have to uh, smoking should be ceased most uh, important step in this condition is whenever if you pass the infant feeding to beneath from the mesentery you have to fix that mesentery uh, with the dinoplast making figure of 4 right gujarati 4 right and you fix this uh, so it will not give rise to retraction the retraction. boil loop remains there that is most important thing right okay uh, control of diabetes control of underlying inflammatory bowel disease and adequate drainage of infection the area of separation is cleansed with saline and any necrotic tissue can be gently uh, debrided uh, should not go for expensive debridation in these cases otherwise it will cause uh, retraction stoma retraction uh, mechanism for stoma retraction include tension on the mesentery related to obesity or mesenteric edema may pull the bowel down to the level of the skin and if there is significant weight change weight gain uh, causing skin fold to overlap the loop uh, problems face are inadequate sealing of the appliance and persistent pouching difficulties which may require local revision or uh, relocation of the ostomy uh, the revision uh, ileostomy for um, retracted stoma is shown in this figure a circumferential incision with a uh, skin disc is uh, placed around the stoma uh, after which we reach the anterior rectus sheath the stoma is mobilized from the fascia and the peritoneum the uh, redundant part of the uh, the redundant part of the stoma uh, is amputated uh, and then ileum is fixed to the fascia and then uh, brook maturation is done by 3.6 stomal stenosis uh, narrowing at the end of the uh, at the level of the skin or fascia uh, if it is an end colostomy uh, early diagnosis can be made when ribbon like stool patient complains of uh, passing stool difficulty and uh, with some colicky pain at the local site and ribbon shaped stools uh, appear in the stoma bag uh, the causes for stem, uh, stomal stenosis include ischemia there is if there is technical issue that is a small opening in the skin or fascia uh, patient is going post operative radiotherapy uh, crohn's disease and uh, reaction to suture material initial patient, management yes in patients was it will just like coming yes say paste like it, this stool is coming just like paste paste tooth paste yes rather than patient will say ribbon like stool is coming right yes oh. initial management is gentle dilatation with uh, uh, dilators hega dilators and 
low fiber diet and stool softness for uh, colostomy if there is recurrent obstructive episodes or uh, recurrent colicky pain a revision stoma can be done if patient is uh, non compliant and complaining again and again for similar episodes uh, prolapse uh, most commonly associated with loop stoma especially loop colostomy uh, risk factors include obesity poor muscle tone a uh, larger trephine uh, mate raised intra abdominal pressure as in cases of pregnancy uh, assess for pain uh, we, we will have to assess for pain incarceration uh, bowel ischemia and con condition of the periostomal skin uh, initially it can be reduced with gentle continuous pressure over the stoma with patient in under iv sedation or analgesia uh, hygroscopic agents like glycerin uh, can be applied over the mucosa of the bowel to reduce the edema and then gentle pressure can be applied over it uh, previously sugar can, sugar was also used for such purpose if there is obstruction ischemia or incarceration uh, which is uh, associated if we are able to visualize the bowel which has become necro uh, which is showing duskiness uh, if there is any obstruction uh, obstruction at the level of the fascia or at the level of the skin and uh, there is incarceration uh, it indicate uh, these are the indications for surgery with uh, resection of the prolapse segment and uh, either ileostomy from the same site or we will have to change the ostomy site parastomal hernia uh, parastomal hernia is defined as a incisional hernia related to the abdominal wall stoma incidence uh, in end ileostomy is 2 to 28% and in end colostomy it is 4 to 48% uh, here the facial defect is shown through which the colon is going and through this defect the peritoneum and the bowel loop sometimes enter through these uh, facial defects into the subcutaneous space or intermuscular plane types of parastomal hernia in subcutaneous plane there is a facial defect through which the bowel loops and the peritoneal sac uh, sac enters into the subcutaneous tissue uh, then there is interstitial or interparietal hernia in which uh, the bowel loop enter into the uh, in between the internal oblique and transversal abdominis as shown in this figure or within the muscular plane uh, the sac is present in parastomal there is a prolapse of the hernia with uh, prolapse of the a uh, bowel loop within the uh, stoma it is known as parastomal uh, hernia uh, parastomal herniation and in intrastomal also it is a parastomal not parastomal it is a pronounced as a parastomal herniation and diagnosis is done by the dynamic ct scan hmm? we are yeah. doing dynamic ct scan so in which when patient is coughing or coughing. doing the valsalva maneuver The raised intra-abdominal pressure will show you the how much loop is coming out parastomal. Yes. So that will say you the which type of surgery you will do. You will you have to explore the whole abdomen, or only you can explore the parastomal area and uh, you put the mesh accordingly. Do a, right. So if it is a very yes. large hernia by the side and it it is having yes. some obstruction in dynamic study, then it requires laparotomy and you have to manage that parastomal obstruction also. Yes. Right. Continue. And uh, D is the intrastomal uh, hernia in which, from the one end of the uh, matured skin part, the herniation is coming. Uh, the peritoneal sac is coming like an entrocele into the bowel lumen itself. Uh, risk factors for parastomal hernia include waist circumference of more than one hundred centimeter, smoking, age, uh, older age group. poor uh, preoperative sighting of the stoma malnutrition a uh, purchase size of more than 2 to 3 finger bread uh, if patient is known case of immunocompromised states like diabetes in inflammatory bowel disease uh, chronic obstructive uh, pulmonary disease causing intra increased intra abdominal uh, pressure in cases of intra abdominal hypertension if un an unplanned pregnancy or pregnancy post uh, end stoma is uh, done uh if there is an underlying malignancy or if patient is having ascites now day we are seeing few patients who are having incisional hernia and if you operate for the incisional hernia uh, then after the surgery we have seen three four cases in which the parastomal hernia develops later 
So this can also happen because it weakens the parastomal abdominal. suture. Yes. Right? Okay. Uh, clinical feature, most commonly they are asymptomatic. Parastomal discomfort with intermittent obstructive episodes can happen. Patient will complain with stoma appliance. Uh, application of stoma appliance will be difficult. There will be uh, repeated episodes in which it will leak. Uh, it is rare. It rarely presents with this incarceration or strangulation. Uh, most commonly occurs in end stoma, then loop stoma, and in colostomy, then in ileostomy. Management, if temporary and asymptomatic, it can be tackled with stoma closure. Uh, if surgical, while uh, we will go for a stoma closure, we can repair the defect. Uh, surgical repair uh, can be divided into uh, three types. Uh, relocation of stoma, simple closure of the aponeuritic defect or the facial defect, and prosthetic repair. Prosthetic repair can be only inlay, sublay, or intraperitoneal. The European hernia society classification for parastomal hernia uh, derived from the radiological results in the clinical examination of the patient. It is divided into four types. Type one, when less than five centimeter in sac is less than five centimeter in diameter and there is no existing uh, incisional hernia. Uh, two, if it is less than five centimeter in diameter and including coexisting incisional hernia. Type three, if greater than five centimeter in diameter and there is no coexisting incisional hernia. And fourth is greater than five centimeter in diameter and includes coexisting incisional hernia. It uh, will dis define the management uh, which we can do in these patients. If there is coexisting incisional hernia, uh, uh, intraperitoneal mesh plasty uh, can be a better option. If there is no coexisting incisional hernia, then from local site we can go into retrorectus plane and sublay uh, mesh plasty can be done. In retroactive plane or preperitoneal plane. Uh, indications for surgical repair 30% of these patients will require surgical management uh, in which patients are having pain, obstruction, uh, features of obstruction, or difficult, uh, repeated difficulty in application of stoma appliances. Uh, for diagnosis, abdominal CT, as ma'am said, dynamic CT can be insightful in difficult cases. Uh, according to the Moreno, Matias, and CO classification on the basis of the radiological result, the following categories can be identified. Uh, zero CT image is normal. In this case, the peritoneum follows the bowel wall, but there is no sac. In 1A, bowel uh, forming a colostomy with a sac smaller than 5 cm in size. In 1B, bowel is forming the colostomy with a sac larger than 5 cm. Uh, if the sac is containing momentum, it is type 2. And in type 3, a sac containing an intestinal loop, which is not the bowel, which forms the stoma or in true sense parastomal. Uh, aponeuritic repair or simple facial closure, it has a very high recurrence rate. Within one year, mostly 58 to 100 percent of the patients will present with recurrence. So not done in present scenario. Uh, prosthetic repair is the ideal method. Uh, here I have shown the way in which prosthetic repair can be done. In only uh, mesh, it is placed anterior to the anterior rectus sheath in the subcutaneous plane. But there are high chances of infection and uh, mesh reactions, seroma formation. In inlay mesh... Other uh, than seroma formation, if you are putting mesh like this, sometimes what happens, there is a multiple sinuses forms. Yes, so, sir. because of the erosion, mm -hmm. so there may be a multiple yes. sinus because of the infection of the mesh, yes, uh, because it is contaminated with the fecal matter, and so fecal it matter. may give rise to multiple sinuses. Yes. Okay. Uh, inlay mesh, it is placed in the abdominal wall defect and sutured to the wound edges. The anterior rectus sheath, as it is a part of, it is just like a replacement mesh. Again, uh, infection uh, chances and erosion of mesh are more in inlay mesh, and it is a difficult procedure to do in cases of parastomal hernia. Uh, sublay mesh, uh, it is placed dorsal to the rectus muscle in a retrorectus plane or can be done in a periperitoneal plane if plane can be made. Uh, ND. Uh, now, sandwich mesh is kept. So, preperitoneal mesh is kept as well as sub as well as mesh intraperitoneal kept. mesh. Both. Uh, pre -peritoneal, uh, either you can keep intraperitoneal and preperitoneal or you can keep the preperitoneal and the subcutaneous. These yes, two, two uh, meshes. Uh, yes, ma'am. Sandwich or modified sandwich technique. I mentioned later, ma'am. Okay. Yes. 
इंट्रा पेरिटोनियल ऑनले मैश और आईपॉम इज डन प्लेस इन द इंट्रा पेरिटोनियल रीजन विद इन द पेरिटोनियम इन विद इन द एबडोमिनल कैविटी कंसिडरेशन फॉर ओपन और लेप्रोस्कोपिक प्रोसेटिक रिपेयर इंक्लूड रेट्रो एक्टर्स मैश प्लास्टी और इंट्रा पेरिटोनियल मैश प्लास्टी इज द मोस्ट एडवांटेजेस टेक्निक uh low weight polypropylene mesh is used in retroactors of preperitoneal mesh plasty and eptfe or composite mesh is used in intraperitoneal mesh plasty with the side uh, towards the bowel showing uh, made up of inert material or biological uh, or ultimately biological mesh can also be placed but it is uh, very expensive uh the recurrence rate is 7% uh the techniques for the mesh placement in retroactors plane or intraperitoneal ली इंक्लूड मॉडिफाइड इंक्लूड मॉडिफाइड शुगर बेकर टू पैच और मॉडिफाइड सैंडविच सैंडविच टेक्निक एंड की होल्ड टेक्निक रेयरली ट्रांसफर सेप्टोमिन रिलीज इज ऑल्सो रिक्वायर्ड दिस इज द की होल्ड टेक्निक इन लेप्रोस्कोपिक इंट्रा पेरिटोनियल मैश प्लास्टिक देर इज अलिट विच इज मेड ओवर दर इज अलिट एंड की होल लाइक to accommodate the bowel loop is made in the mesh uh, before applying before inserting the mesh itself into the abdominal cavity this is a laparoscopic view we can also go for open repair by uh, midline uh, incision or later to the stoma later incision uh, from this we enter into the retroactors plane or uh, intraperitoneal uh, region and slide the uh, just slide the uh, slide the mesh uh, across the bowel loop and the keyhole if we are using a later incision then the keyhole region will reach to the uh, more medially and if we are using a midline incision then it will come laterally and then uh, tackers are used in these cases in two layers uh, uh, as seen in this uh, figure ma'am in two layers one is uh, very in uh, very proximal or snugly fitting to the uh, so that mesh snugly fits into the uh, bowel loop uh, around the bowel loop and one at the periphery the second layer almost what we call double crowning where we are doing a lipoma yes ma'am yes sir hmm. so 5 cm all around 5 cm is uh, yes ma'am 5 cm mesh whenever you are keeping it should be from the stoma or the bowel 5 cm all around yes in sugar baker technique we create a tunnel uh, uh, between the mesh and the peritoneum uh, sorry between the mesh and the peritoneum there is a 5 cm long tunnel and the principle is that uh, the sheet uh, the defect is covered for 5 cm by the tunnel and then uh, mesh and 5 cm all around is also placed there is no slit uh, which is made in this uh mesh uh, plastic it is a uh, non slit mesh and again the tackers are applied once snugly fitting to the tunnel uh, and another of uh, in the periphery the principle that 5 cm of uh, the defect has uh, the mesh has to go beyond 5 cm from the defect is applicable here also in sandwich technique uh, as we can see uh, one mesh is placed in the intraperitoneal region and the other mesh is uh, present in the uh, in the preperitoneal region uh, so this is the initial sandwich technique in which the both the meshes were placed by a keyhole technique and tunnel was not made uh, in this modified uh, sandwich technique or two patch technique the second mesh which is placed intraperitoneally is in a sugar baker manner and the above preperitoneal the one place in a preperitoneal plane or can be kept in posterior rectus uh retro rectus plane is a slit mesh or a, uh, done by a keyhole technique and uh once in a while uh, we may require transverse abdominis if they uh, release if it is a larger ah. parastoma hernia uh as we can see by later incision we can go into the retroactors plane reach the posterior uh, lamina of the uh, transversus abdominis muscle and the internal oblique muscle which is attaching into the linea semilunaris 
we divide it and then divide the fibers of transverse abdominis muscle once they are uh, divided a tunnel the tunnel here is created between the uh, retrorectus posterior sheath and the uh, transverse abdominis muscle in between them this 5 cm tunnel is made and mesh is placed in between the peritoneum uh, in between the posterior rectus sheath and the tunnel and the entire mesh is uh, by a sugar baker technique is placed uh, applied in the retrorectus plane entirely it is uh, a newer method and it has least uh, recurrence whole of prophylactic mesh in end stoma i have uh, the one meta analysis which i have uh, read includes that prophylactic mesh placement to avoid incisional hernia after stoma reversal it is a, it was a systemic review and meta analysis which included 241 articles and 536 patients uh, in which prophylactic mesh was placed in 168 patients out of 100 536 patients to prevent incisional hernia and follow up range from 10 months to 21 months uh, approximately 1 to 1 and a half years and the risk of incisional it found that the risk of incisional hernia in case of prophylactic mesh placement was significantly lower in comparison to no mesh placement and there was no uh, differences in the surgical site infections uh, between the two groups so uh, by this meta analysis it is uh, better to use a prophylactic mesh while doing and which and mesh so was used in this analysis uh, ma'am in this analysis they had used eptfe mesh for intraperitoneal uh, the only technique that they have uh, used in most of these patients approximately out of 168 150 or approximately patients uh, only intraperitoneal only mesh plasty was done and eptfe graft was eptfe okay. uh, was used okay thank you nice thing very well okay excellent well done ha kaushik yes sir well done thank you uh, okay ma'am shall we review okay thank you thank you okay. sir